The ghost hunter Karnacki has been called to explore the mysterious case of a ghost in the chapel of a family's castle property and recollects his findings with his friends. The Thing Invisible was actually the sixth of the Karnacki stories published, but my collection places it first. I've been assured that the stories are disconnected enough to not require a specific reading order, but perhaps this being first is because of how strong it is as a story. The setting, the mystery, the solution, the main character, the prose, everything just kind of works to make this a very, very enjoyable time and one that I think everyone should experience. If you have not read it, I heavily recommend you do so because it's a mystery and spoiling mysteries as I'm going to do in the next section, well, ruins the mystery and kind of reduces the reading value of the story if you have not experienced it yet. Either way, I give The Thing Invisible a 5 out of 5. Karnacki recounts to some pals what he experienced at a private estate, a castle with a chapel that is said to be haunted. Karnacki as a self-narrator for his recounting is clean and clear, explaining the setting deftly. It is said that a dagger used as part of chapel tradition in this area is haunted. Well, either the dagger or the invisible wielder of it. One evening, the dagger has found a target in one of the owner's servant's chest. Karnacki's task is to determine who or what the culprit is, why the knife ended up there, and how it ended up doing so with clearly no possible physical manifestation of a person wielding it. A camera is set in the chapel and a picture is taken during the daytime and Karnacki sets to take a picture at night as well, or at least allow for some exposure to enter a slate so that he can have a picture of sorts after, you know, setting film because film behaves a lot differently than say phone cameras do. In case you happen to be a youngin who doesn't even know what film cameras are. Either way, Karnacki manages to forge a key he's able to order a forged key so that he can get into the chapel at night when it is otherwise typically locked at the owner Jarnox, Jarnox? I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry, uh, at his discretion. He has the lone single key and insists that nobody is there during the night. This is a rather suspicious thing as we will note later. In the chapel at night when Karnacki is able to get in with his forged key, he hears disturbing and terrifying sounds. When he goes to investigate, he is attacked. The same way the man before was injured, the reason why he is here in the first place, so is Karnaki. Fortunately, he was wearing armor. He put on armor from the castle's armory to protect himself in the case of something attacking him. Pretty good forethought. The man rushes out of the chapel, locking whatever may be there in there, keeping it there until the morning. In the morning, he takes the photo that was taken during the daytime, plus the unexposed plate from the camera, to check out what they show. It turns out, there's no ghost in this particular instance, there's no invisible personage wielding the knife. Instead, a trap has been set in the chapel by the owner of the estate himself, one that he unsets in the mornings and resets in the evenings to protect some valuable jewelry in the chapel. Jewelry that was once his wife's before her passing. Karnacki is able to get another man of the castle at the estate to evoke a sort of feverish confession from the owner of the estate, thus confirming his theory. The trap is dismantled, disabled, and the affair is to be handled quietly so that no authorities have to be involved. Because Karnacki is a detective of sorts and these stories are, as I said, mysteries with clear conclusions and I just explained the whole thing, there isn't a whole lot to analyze, but I was surprised a bit by how clear cut the story was. Generally speaking, the story was such a joy to read. It was gripping, Karnacki is a compelling storyteller, the prose was smooth and fun, and the mystery had me on the edge of my seat the entire way through. The tone in the atmosphere is also sold quite well. For example, when Karnacki is stuck in the chapel at night when he's locked himself in there with the camera getting, you know, just the unexposed light to see the story of the nighttime. It is quite terrifying to read. Karnacki is terrified by sounds that maybe he's imagining or maybe have, you know, 
explanations that he gives at the very end of the story. More details there if you've read it. But I genuinely found myself quite tense while reading the story anyway. Like I said, it was all done very well. If the rest of the Karnaki stories are comparable in quality to any extent or degree, I'm definitely very excited to continue with these stories. Thanks for coming to this video. Let me know how the story worked for you if you happen to read it. I know that mysteries can be rather hit or miss depending on how the solutions come about and depending on the reader's tastes. This one very clearly worked for me and it seems on Goodreads there are very few outright negative reviews or ratings between 1 and 2 stars. Though there are also not a whole ton of other 5 stars like my own vast majority are three stars and with some of those being four stars as well so you know nothing too bad it has a fine average but it is interesting when this story was so clearly a five star for me that most other people found it to be you know three to four a pretty average story let me know what you thought if you happened to read it but turning from one form of mystery that has a solution and a detective to solve it we're moving to another mystery in two weeks on the 14th when I will be covering Dagon by H.P. Lovecraft. This is one of his most popular stories and potentially the story that really started to improve his fame. It is one that is very similar to much of his later work and has much of the same stylistic choices. It is one that I enjoyed very much as well and I hope to see you there.